Dome on fire, Tenth Dome on fire. Need your response to burning building at 608 Dry Creek Road. The story of Cafe Homestead begins with a humble long cabin made of local cedars three decades ago. It was initially built as a visitor center and the first public building of Homestead Heritage, an intentional Christian community located north of Waco, Texas. Bordering the Brazos River, the 550-acre working farm grows crops and livestock in a sustainable, small-scale fashion. Over the course of three decades, the Cedar Log Cabin expanded to become a farm-to-table restaurant, Waco's highest rated culinary destination. A beloved spot for celebrating life's special moments, like graduations, anniversaries, and birthdays. Cafe Homestead made number one on the Explorist Travel Blog's 20 Best Restaurants in Waco. Family Destinations Guide gave Cafe Homestead its number one editor's choice for places to visit in Waco. According to the Waco Trib, Cafe Homestead made Yelp's 2022 list of the top 100 places to eat in the state of Texas. And then, two mornings before Christmas, everything went wrong. I get a phone call, and it's, it's around one something in the morning. He said, Ossie, the cafe is on fire. And I said, you're kidding. That's impossible. How? What happened? It was about nine degrees that night. And I came zooming up here. I parked my car back over by the model homestead. And the blaze was astounding. The heat was so intense that you, ha you couldn't get closer than, I don't know, probably 30 yards without it being intolerable. And we watched as it it would burn and then all of a sudden these explosions and whistles and bangs and it was, it was a horrible feeling. I had just left town for Christmas and my wife wakes me up around three in the morning. Um, Honey, the cafe is on fire. Um, I'm pretty groggy and um, in my mind, I guess I thought it was a pretty small fire. And I said, well, did they, did they put it out? And she picks up, she puts the phone in front of my face and um, <clears throat> the first thing I see is a photo of the cafe totally engulfed in flames. And in that moment, my mind had to make a terrible leap. The cafe wasn't just on fire, the cafe was gone. Probably around uh, 1.30 or so in the morning, um, I got a phone call and I knew it had to be something serious. And uh, so I, I already started to get out of bed in anticipation of what's going on. And I heard that the cafe was on fire. As I was approaching the scene, I mean, you could just see the glow over the top of the trees. And as I pulled up and got out of the truck, <laughs> this, uh, you know, iconic building is completely engulfed in flames. You know, you're watching you're watching not just a building burn, you're watching a lot of memories burn. And, uh, and the context for a lot of friendship and, you know, experiences. I think people saw the cafe as merely an emblem of friendship, a friendship that we had. I remember Andrew sent me a, a list 
of messages and notes. It was like hundreds of messages and notes that we had received from people who had built memories with us in that context. And I stood up in church and read that to 1,200 people. I wanted people to know how deep the friendships really do run. It was a barrage that kept going for weeks. People saying, we'll do whatever it takes to help you. And we, we know what you've gone through, but we'll do whatever it takes. And, and you just felt like this wave of love and support started coming and pushing back against the wave of disaster. We did feel the spark and the assurance of victory right there while we were still watching the spectacle. By 10 o'clock that morning, we were all in my living room having our first meeting on the rebuild. Represented are, are people from multiple different businesses, and each of those businesses have different expertise and different access. And, and everybody is just saying, this is our community. We're gonna do whatever it takes to help out. I, I offered and said, listen, could we help from a design standpoint? Um, Zane stepped forward and said, look, I, I wanna take this on from a project management and superintending standpoint. Um, and we just got a lot of people coming in uh, out of the woodworks basically and saying, how can I help? What can I do? I think one of the most powerful motifs in human existence is redemption. And nothing depicts redemption like the biblical concept of beauty emerging from ashes. And that's the hope that we felt even that first day after the tragedy. But there was something in us, we, we wanted to, yes, build the cafe with features that reminded people of the old setting but with spaces consistent with our current needs. But we also wanted to take some of that pain, some of that loss, some of that charred wood, and repurpose it as something beautiful. Ossie, good morning. Good, good morning. Wow, I have not been up to it yet. Of course, that night, the fire, I came up, but you couldn't get within 100 yards of it. Yes, so. sir. Well, I mean, this is my first time to walk through it. You want to take a look? Yes, let's get down in there. Brings back memories. Look at this. So this would have been dining room one right here. Yes. And you can see the, the foundation marks out the spaces. It looks so small, too. I mean, I know. In a way, it looks small. Here's one of the hand forged corbels. Must have been holding up a. a like it. I think there's a shelf. Look, there's a shelf right up here. There they are. They would have Yeah. They were right up here. Yeah. Wow. So. Schedule. Everybody's waiting to hear. When are we going to be back up again? Well, you know the building process is better than I do, but there's nobody better to talk about Caleb. this than Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an audacious plan. We do. Yeah. So We're talking about the first week of June. Wow. 2024, 25. Yeah. This year, 2023. <laughs> yeah, we don't have really? time to wait around. It's going to be quite an undertaking, but it's going to be a community effort. How exciting. I know what those are and night and day and all ages. That is exciting. Because we're not just trying to build the structure. We're trying to build all the furnishings, tables, chairs, the lamps over the tables, down to the baskets that the bread is served in. We're trying to make it all right here in the craft village. Let me ask you a crazy question. Is there any salvage for any of the wood? I guess not. Wood. <laughs> okay, so we uh -huh. got an idea. <laughs> okay, I'm so ready. Go ahead. <laughs> We're ready. right over yeah. here. We've got a wall. Um, yeah, we have is, a burned wall. We do. <laughs> and uh, and but there are sections of that wall where there's actually quite a bit of material left. It might be charred on one side, but maybe the back side of this wall is actually it's actually not too bad. And so we've got a couple of thoughts. 
we're gonna actually salvage as much of this burnt material as we can. Then as a design element, this will probably go and make up some of the cash wraps and even maybe the background. Well, I could see putting the Cafe Homestead sign right on that as that, yeah. that is the backdrop. Well, that's very interesting. I can think of a precedent that I saw for it one time. In the basement of the White House from the War of 1812, they still have the scorching on the wall. So, right? so when do you knock this thing over, the first thing that goes over? It'll be Wednesday morning. Oh, good. Okay. We're gonna be in here, all the equipment, everybody's lined up, and I think we've got about, got about three days of cleanup. Wow. And then we're gonna be ready to start now. Great. Well, I'll be sure to be here, love to see it. Yes, sir. In 1993, we were new to the Waco area. My dad, at the time, he wanted to create what he said was a front porch, a, a space where people could come and get to know us, hear our stories, uh, view what we were doing on the farm, and, and uh, that we could kind of start to interface with the broader community. We titled it a visitor center at the time, and it really became a project of our, our young people to build. There was a kind of a clearing up there by the front road coming in as you came in the gate. On the right was kind of some cleared rough land with cedars and I thought, well right here was a good place to put a parking lot and put the building right there. We started by harvesting logs locally, pulling them out with horses, milling them up on our mobile sawmill and then putting it together as a traditional two-pin dog trot log cabin. It opened up and the left side was crafts with a little bookshop called Best Books in the back. And the right side was the cafe, which was sandwiches at lunchtime. Kind of build your own sandwich was the menu and you could come in and, and order what you wanted. And maybe there were four tables. Now, I was, the next shop that went up was the wood shop, and I, so I was up here a lot then, and that was 95, and we built that, but, you know, at the time, uh, we were kind of in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't much going on out here. So we came down this unpaved country road out toward Golson, so we were way, it wasn't like it is today, 30 years later. So you'd, as people would have to go out of their way to get there, so, my daughter worked in the cafe. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes I said, how many people came in today? And she'd say, well, well none. <laughs> uh, nobody came down Albert Lane. Uh, and then it would start trickling in. People would hear about it and they'd come back. And it really went out by word of mouth. Over time, as the community grew, as Waco as a city grew, the needs for that space uh, evolved along with that. And eventually it became a full-fledged, full-service restaurant. And so when it burned down, it was like, how can we try to maintain the charm of this old log cabin while still making it something large enough to accommodate the customers that we have? That to me was the challenge. You had to capture Ah, the feeling of the building, of what people that, that ah, is the word quaint or warm or friendly or, you gotta admit, it was a very different kind of restaurant. Now, you can lose that by, you know, if we put up a uh, glass and steel building, we'd probably lose the feeling. That's a challenge. And, and I mean, in the first week I had people calling me, multiple people calling me, who helped build the first cafe. And they're calling me saying, now we're not going to do something that is totally different, has nothing in common with the original cafe, are we? We're not going to lose what the cafe was, are we? So there's this pressure. On the one hand, it would be foolish to duplicate what was already unworkable in the old system. And it would also be foolish to lose the atmosphere, the setting, the ambiance of that original. So, you know, in construction, they always say it's a three-legged stool. You've got quality, you've got budget, 
and you have schedule. And they always say pick two because there's this kind of give and take between all of that. So we knew that the, the two that were gonna be competing and vying for uh, priority was, was gonna be the budget and it was gonna be the schedule. So as a community, we have our 50th anniversary and all of that has been planned for a long time. And that's kind of a drop dead date. So we knew the first week of June, we were gonna have to be open. So there's the schedule. We didn't know how much this building was ultimately going to cost. Sure, we could kind of figure it out and, and guess and all of this, but we, you know, we, we didn't really know until we had a set of plans. Well, when are we going to have a complete set of plans so we can figure this out? A design for something like this is typically a maybe a six-month process. We didn't have six months to go through that process. So uh, we decided that we were going to have to start today and we were going to have to do all of that simultaneously. This is on most levels is impossible, but we're gonna find real enjoyment in this challenge and overcoming these things one line item at a time, one day at a time, one work weekend at a time, till we come to the end and we actually are in a restaurant again. Good morning. Morning. You guys didn't waste any time. No, we tried not to. <laughs> Have you guys been here all night? No, as much as we could. We couldn't get any end dumps in the middle of the night to haul any debris off, but we that makes sense. burned a lot, and tore up a bunch of scrap metal, so. Man, well, once we got the, uh, got the go ahead from the insurance to start tearing it down. <laughs> it was hours before we were sitting there. That's great. Okay, so man, looks like you managed to get the whole wall out in one piece. Yes, this was that end wall of the second dining room with the big transom window on the top of it. Yep. So yeah. you're able to get it down with an excavator and a strap and then lay it down and basically it's now sitting on stickers ready to transport to storage until we know exactly what we're going to do with it. But we figured it'd be good to save it for whoever's got ideas to use it. Okay, so this, <laughs> this may sound crazy, but what we're thinking about doing is actually using this as the backdrop behind the reception. Love and it. so I don't know if we'll epoxy it or clear coat it in some way so that it's clean, yeah. but it'll provide kind of a very interesting, you know, it'll, it'll tell the story basically yep. of how it burned down and we've rebuilt around it. Obviously it won't be structural, although look at this. Look at all that good wood. It's... This thing went through an unbelievably hot fire and really it just charred. Just the that? very outside. Outer yeah. quarter inch or so. It's... Some of these areas it's a little bit worse, but that's, that's perfectly good Eastern mm. red cedar. So we might even, maybe we'll sand it down a little bit mm. to where we get a lot of that loose stuff off, yeah. clean it up, and uh, we can start using it for, for something. Can't you just picture the new Cafe Homestead sign yes. right Beautiful. over that? I think it'll really pop. Yeah. So, well, this is great. How much longer do you guys think you have just on the cleanup side of it? Uh, weather permitting, maybe three days. That would include the main excavation uh, as well, not just the cleanup. So we're looking, what do you think? Two weeks? Have some concrete on the to ground? To see concrete in the ground, yes. Okay, we have four months until we have a hard grand opening. Yes. And so we've got a lot to fit in between now and then. So obviously, you know, we're still in process with engineering on the foundation, but you're getting ready to start shooting grades for that very foundation. Monday. Can we pull it off? Yes, sir. All right, yeah, so I guess we're starting to load up everything. How many loads do you think you have? Um. I guess maybe 10 with the excavation. We'll have to excavate some out for the, the main slab, but I think with the rubble and the right. excavation, probably 10 or 12 loads. Okay, well, the forecast is showing that we've got rain coming in. Obviously, once we have concrete, we can work through just about anything, but if yes. we get washed out before we get concrete in here, it's gonna push the whole schedule out. So, what do you think? I think we have a really nice Gantt chart that 
does not have any rain scheduled on it. Okay. <laughs> it is tight from beginning to end, that Gantt chart is, so we'll do everything to work around it, but you're correct in the, the fact that the foundation is most affected by that. Okay. We're gonna get as much of this out of here as we can today, so. I'm, honestly, I'm impressed with how much you guys got done just since okay. yesterday, so. It's amazing what you can do with a little less sleep <laughs> and a light tower. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it for yeah. sure. All right, well, now I'm starting to get nervous. We're not gonna be able to stay ahead of you with design, so. Okay, well, it's all right, we'll work together. All right, man. See you Thanks soon. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. The challenge is clear. We have to pour the foundation before the rain comes. We're in a race against the elements and against time. With 18 weeks to our deadline, Zane and his crew will have to work both days and nights to pull it off. The February weather in Texas is notoriously nasty. The forecast is showing rain in the next few days, and we still have to finish clearing the debris, grade the site, form up the foundation, and get 20 tons of rebar into the ground in preparation for concrete.